So, my name is Esther Modewijk and I'm the founder of Dutch Harvest Hemp Tea. And well, we make uh, hemp tea from, uh, from Dutch soil. The story begins when I used to be a sustainability consultant um, for about 12 years and um, I was always working for my clients to find more sustainable alternatives for the materials that they were using. And then at some point I just kept finding hemp. So I had a client in construction and I found out that hemp is great for building. I had a client in funeral coffins actually and I found out that hemp textile would be much better than, uh, than to use cotton as we do right now. And I had a client in food and I found out that hemp seeds can really help in the protein transition towards more uh, plant-based diet. So I kept finding hemp and at some point I, I had to realize like it is addictive after all. <laughs> I just kept on reading about it and I kept on finding people who did something with hemp and I, I really felt like I should, should work with this plant and I wanted to do something with this plant. So um, at some point uh, I started the Hemp Collective um, when I had found some other people in the Netherlands who were enthusiastic about this plant. And together we've, had many, we, we've given out many readings about hemp, lectures around the country. And actually in, in cooperation with the hemp farmer Dun Agro, we also um, made an exhibition of a, an, an entire hemp house. And in that hemp house um, we had a whole uh, hemp exhibition, like a, a hemp museum for a few months, uh, educating people about hemp. So that's what I've been doing for the first year, but then I realized that I was still only talking about the plants. And as I was telling everyone that hemp is a great business case, I thought I should actually prove this myself. So then I approached this farmer, Den Agro, and um, I realized that he was mostly using the fibers from his fields and also the, the, the wooden uh, stalks from the inside, but he wasn't using the leaves so much. And at that time I also found out that the leaves actually make a very mild tasting tea and that was actually also the moment when CBD was kind of on the rise being discovered as, as um, well for its healing and therapeutic properties to, um, to keep it very short. Uh, so that's when I thought I should actually do something with these leaves and make a hemp tea. So first I tried some and took it home and, and put it in the sun in my, um, at my window. And then I really, really liked it and people around me really liked it as well. And that's when I, when it kind of snapped and I felt like I should, should make a business out of this or I should bring this to the people. So that's basically the whole background behind um, the idea behind Dutch Harvest. But then I obviously didn't have any like starting money. So I realized that I would have to do a crowdfunding campaign. Um, which is something, something I would recommend to anyone who is in the hemp business because, well, hemp, it keeps raising awareness quite easily. It raised about 200 people um, who kind of uh, supported the crowdfunding campaign for tea. So basically what I did is selling tea in advance um, and sold about, um, for about 15,000 euros on, uh, on tea uh, with my crowdfunding campaign. And that's how I was able to fund, uh, well, the first uh, designs uh, for Dutch Harvest and the first packaging and the first harvest that we did together with uh, Dun Agro. Um, for, for crowdfunding, I would really say go for it. Um, it's, uh, crowdfunding is a really good way to, to start your business, but um, be aware it's actually quite an expensive way to raise money because it's costing a lot of time. Uh, you have to make a good video. Um, there's a, the crowdfunding platforms, they have a lot of demand from you because they want to be sure that your product is like reliable. So it takes a lot of time, but the good thing is it's the cheapest way and the best way and the most I would say grassrooted way to raise awareness for your project. So it's so much cooler to say like, okay, we want to, to harvest the first hemp leaves of the Netherlands for hemp tea. Will you help us with this project? That's so much cooler than to say, hey, here's our tea, you want to buy it. So this the, like the first option I think was 25 euros, it was like um, uh, uh, four packs of, of tea and, and, uh, and a nice chocolate bar along with it and one of those um, iron steel things to, to make the loose leaf tea in your cup, like one of the filters. So that was the first option and then there was an option of like 
eight packs of tea and an option, option of 100 packs of tea for all your friends. But at, obviously I needed to have a few higher amounts as well to get to 15,000 euros. So I also had a few like higher end options, which were for instance, a harvest celebration in the hemp field, um, which was great. We had about 60 crowdfunders doing that. So that had um, um, an arrangement where they could visit our hemp field just before the harvest. We gave them a whole tour through the facility of Den Agro and uh, we, we put some long tables in the middle of the hemp field and cooked a whole hemp menu for them and they could all symbolically harvest their first plants and, and make, uh, make tea from it and we had some music along. So you really want to, I had to, to first come up with some uh, crowdfunding options that raise a bit more money than 25 euros for a pre-sale of tea. And secondly, you want to do something, people, some people really want to get involved. They want to see you, they want to, they want to feel the project, they want to feel part of it. So you have to come up with some options for those. So it's so much better to, to get people along with your mission beforehand. So yes, I, I would really um, recommend anyone to do it. Uh, at the same time, uh, one thing I didn't realize is that uh, I had a lot of publicity around the crowdfunding campaign. Like at the time we just raised the money and also a lot of publicity when we, when we reached the goal and we were able to harvest. But then between the harvest time and the actual first packs on the market, there was about four months. And uh, by that time people had forgotten about it. So you really have to realize that you don't peak in your publicity too early. So that you have, at least you have another kind of newsworthy moments by the time that you launch your packs. So um, yeah, so don't have too much publicity when you can't deliver yet. So that, that would be my tips on crowdfunding. Empty. Empty. Ah. So, so firstly, uh, obviously I think hemp is the most sustainable plant you could think of and you could, you could um, work with hemp to replace many unsustainable materials. So you can use it for building, which is currently very, a very unsustainable practice. You could use it for textiles, which is a very unsustainable the way we are growing uh, cotton now. Um, so the hemp plant in itself has very sustainable uh, applications. Also the way it grows obviously doesn't need any chemicals. It it's improves the structure of the soil. It absorbs a lot of CO2. So also just the growing of hemp is something that I would encourage for the environment. Um, and then uh, in terms of the tea, uh, most tea comes from Asia. Uh, has to be imported here, uh, whereas this comes obviously just from the north of the Netherlands, so it's very local and it also comes from a field where the fibers are also used. So we're not using any extra land just for tea, we are using the flowers and leaves that were discarded otherwise. And then secondly, because I used to be a sustainability consultant, I feel like everything in my company should be sustainable. I guess you have a bit of a, a drive to, to prove to people that you can do it. So finally, everything that I was advising about, I can now practice in my own company. So um, we packed the tea at a social enterprise. So people who actually uh, have a, 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 I would say, dis disability or have a distance to the uh, labor market. Um, so they, they do the whole packaging uh, process, which goes really well. In the beginning, it takes a lot of time to explain it all clearly, but once it goes, it goes like a machine. Uh, and secondly, um, I've always been very much against packaging and especially against over packaging. Um, so I, I prefer to have loose leaf tea uh, without all the, the bags and the extra plastic and extra packs around it. And the bag that it's wrapped in is actually biodegradable. So this is a biodegradable plastic and the paper is made from agricultural waste, perhaps at some point in the future from hemp paper or partly hemp paper. But this is as good as we got it. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so when, we, when we started, um, we, we are obviously using the leaves and the flowers of a plant that is uh, mostly used for fibers. Uh, so this is something I really like about it. We don't need extra land. We can just use the whole, uh, the whole part of the plant. Uh, but then in the beginning, I said like, it's great. We can use the wasted material that, that used to be left on the ground. But then when people hear the word waste, they think uh, it's something that they should probably get for free because you get your leaves free, right? That, because they used to be waste. This is the ham tea. 
It's, it's a bit hard to explain um, that it's not for free actually because you need specific harvesting equipment to harvest it, which is what Donato has developed, which is quite expensive. It's really good, but quite expensive. Then you need a drying machine, of course. You need to filter it, take, take any sticks out. You need to uh, save it well. So, there's, so the, the money is not so much in the growing of the plants. The money is in, in or the, the, the value is in everything that you do uh, afterwards. So that's where, we, where I changed um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's like a leftover material. I would say we use an extra value stream of a very sustainable plant, um, which creates even more value for, for the farmer and for society. So yeah, you have to, to be careful of saying that we use wasted material. When I was standing on the, on the market fair in the beginning, selling people about my tea, they were like, oh, hemp, hemp, no. No, you can't have hemp here. And um, then I said, there was actually a man I'm, I have in mind now. I said, sir, can you remember the, the sails of the ships? Can you remember the ropes? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, but that's a whole different plant, right? I was, no, 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 that's the plant we're using. We're using the fiber hemp, which used to be used for, for sails and ropes. And that's really that, that, that association with this very useful plan that many people remember either from themselves or, or from the books before, that's really uh, an argument that, that helps them get over their, their marijuana thing straight away. And then obviously I go on to explain that we use this what's so-called industrial hemp, which doesn't contain THC, but uh, instead contains CBD. But you basically have them at the moment you talk about the, the ropes and the textiles. That's, that's normally what works. And then overall, I've been noticing that I'm getting these comments less and less. So where people used to say, oh, hemp, they now say, oh, hemp, that's about CBD, right? So it's, it's really changed even, or maybe especially within an older target group, because in the Netherlands, many like 60 plus people are looking for CBD for mostly for pains or for stress or because of better sleeping. In the hemp plant, naturally, you have many cannabinoids occurring. The most well-known is obviously the THC, which has a psychoactive effect, but which is not in our hemp. Uh, and another one which occurs quite often is CBD, and that one is currently being discovered as, um, as something that could help with pains um, such as inflammatory pain or to relieve stress or um, anxiety. Um, and that is, um, that is currently actually a, a really big trend in the Netherlands and uh, most people use a very highly extracted way of CBD in so-called CBD oil. Um, but we just use the natural plants, which contain CBD and also the CBDA, which is, I would say, a brother of CBD. But uh, we, don't, we don't have like a medicinal amount of CBD in there. And above all, you cannot actually say from every cup in a very specific way, as you would be able to do with a pill, like there's so many milligrams of CBD in there. If I'm going to try cannabis again, I want to try a family-owned dispensary, and not a massive chain like I used to visit. I was driving through Inglewood, out of the house, which is rare now with COVID. I noticed a small building that looked like it was a remodeled coffee shop. You know the ones. The dispensary was covered in art and murals on all sides. My girlfriend and I had to stop in because the dispensary looked so cool. We waited outside because the dispensary only allowed two people in at a time. 
Outside, we admired the art covering the entire building. The colors popped right off the side of the building. The brilliant colors continued inside. It was tiny, but impressive. The colorful walls were covered in a vast array of colorful products. Walls were lined with a variety of edibles that put many commercial dispensaries to shame. The selection was overwhelming. Pop rocks, marshmallows, chocolate bars, drinks, gum, candy, you name it, they had it. My favorite part was the variety of chocolate bars that went from raspberry cheesecake to peanut butter and jelly. I counted over 20 different types of chocolate bars. I spent a bit more than I expected, but I had to try the edible pop rocks and I'm a sucker for marshmallows. I just wanted to spend the $100 in cash I had, but once the product started to stack up on the table, I knew I was going to have to bust out the credit card. What caught my eye the most was a cookies and cream chocolate bar. It reminded me of the cookies and cream chocolate bars made by Hershey's. I have not had one of these in years and they were my favorite when I was growing up. The bud tender and I started talking. I asked him about the cookies and cream chocolate bar. He said, are you sure this bar is one to one THC and CBD? Sure, why not? Let's give it a go. I've never tried CBD before. My girlfriend and I returned home and planted ourselves in the backyard. The unboxing experience for edibles isn't nearly as satisfying as tearing the wrapper off a candy bar, but the edibles are usually covered in pretty pictures. After fumbling with the child safe tabs, I was greeted with a beautiful cookies and cream chocolate bar sealed inside a clear plastic tray. I broke off a piece and popped it into my mouth, just like how I remembered it, and there was no awful aftertaste from the cannabis. It was 10 milligrams of THC and 10 milligrams of CBD. Sitting in my backyard, my girlfriend and I waited for the edibles to kick in. Slowly the sound of chirping birds and the steady breeze washed away the stresses of the day. Here it comes, the overwhelming feelings of being relaxed and comfortable, and the timing couldn't have been any better because the sun was setting. Sometimes it can be difficult to dose cannabis edibles correctly, and at best you end up not feeling anything, and at worst you end up being way too high. That didn't happen this time though, because CBD helps regulate the aspects of THC that can be uncomfortable, like anxiety and paranoia. In the past, I have felt dissatisfied with my experiences with edibles. Today was different though. I was just relaxed, and with that, the sun set as the rhythmic hum of music increased in intensity and the cannabinoids did their work. So obviously, obviously, when you start a brand like this, you, you look for distribution points that support your values. Especially in the beginning, we had lovely uh, like uh, farmer shops, organic, small organic shops, or like um, concept stores into sustainable materials. So it's really important to be at the right places in the beginning. I have to be honest, at, at the moment I uh, was even still in my crowdfunding campaign, I was approached by a big wholesaler distributing to all the coffee shops in the Netherlands saying like okay we want to get your product in as soon as as it's there and we will have 600 selling points for you and that was a bit of a, um, um, a dilemma for me of course uh, but actually in the end it was quite easy because my whole idea was to get hemp to the mainstream and to to tell people about the sustainability of hemp and to get it out of this marijuana scene and then you know once you get this brand into all the coffee shops you will never ever get it into the organic stores anymore so that's uh, that was actually something I uh, I rejected and at the moment I'm I'm really aiming at organic stores also because they uh, they support my values I I only shop at organic stores I only buy stuff from producers that I feel good about, that I know the story about. So this is also the places I want to be in with my products. Well, the biggest challenge I could say is that um, any chain, chain stores, they really have a lot of demand in terms of advertising and demos. And that is something that I'm not really good at. And 
Uh, that is a that is a whole different field. So it's 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 outrageous what they ask from you in terms of promotion budgets and giving discounts and having tasting demo ladies around. So that is for me a whole different ball game. Uh, something that I have to learn which is the most effective way to gain consumers because in my vision I want consumers to come to the brand because they because I like it and they feel good about it um, and I don't want to spend much money on like advertising I feel like that's really wasted money which should which adds to the price of the package in the end so and also it's very much against my ideology to do all this screaming of buy my brand um, but it's something that is really hard to get around if you want to get in in retail so it's uh, it's ideology wise for me it's sometimes hard on how to deal with this and I try to I, I do talk about the brand but I like to give content like hey this is our field these are the plants that are growing this is how they grow this is how we harvest them something that's interesting for people rather than here's the pack buy it so um, but I have to find a middle in that because I do know people get so much content to them um, and you have to be effective but I always want to be playful and with with content. How much weight is this? Okay. 1,000 kilos. Here is a pack of uh, hemp Dutch harvest hemp chai. Um, so yeah, talking about the packaging, obviously um, there is the hemp, the the, the original um, uh, drawing of the hemp plant on there. When we started this company, it was I had like one month before the crowdfunding campaign where I had to. Um, decide on the name and on the design. It was, it was outrageous how fast everything went. Um, and my designer made five designs and they were all very different. And there were a few of them that didn't have any hemp signs in there at all. And I was immediately drawn to this one, uh, but I was wondering what, what will people think of this? So this is uh, why I put it actually on the crowdfunding page and I asked people to vote for it. And luckily most people said, Go for the hemp plants and then you know have it bright and bold, not just some cute little leaf, but just really go for it. So this is um, this is the key feature of the brand, I would say. And also, it's what I really like about it that it's not really branded. Sometimes it's a bit difficult. People say like, so what is a brand? But Dutch Harvest is a brand, but it's not like a logo brand. It's it's more like a, uh, yeah, it just tells what it is. It's harvested in the Netherlands. Uh, so that's on there. Then organic hemp tea. Um, this is the hemp chai, um, it gives you some warm energy, so I felt, I, I've noticed uh, since the beginning that people are really asking like what, is it, what does it do for me, what does it taste like, this, this is something I changed, the first one was more, uh, less is more, <laughs> and this packaging I've added, like what, what, sort of, what do you get from it, what does this tea feel like, it says warm spicy pick me up with hemp, lemongrass, ginger and cinnamon and there's actually another six herbs on there which are on the ingredient list on the back. The whole packaging is in English um, because um, uh, it's really hard to make package different packages for all countries and then even in the Netherlands, first I had also a Dutch packaging but I noticed that in the Netherlands most companies ask me for the English packaging because they had foreigners as well so in the end I decided to just have one package for all countries so the ingredient list is in English, Dutch, German, Spain, Spanish and French so that means that I will be able officially it's legal for me to sell in all those countries because you need the ingredient declaration in all these countries obviously I tell a bit about the company of hemp that's that's our mission how it's making a comeback and uh, it used to be used for many years already um, so that's important for me um, obviously how to how to boil the tea and well my designer came up with this lovely gimmick here uh, for the barcode and then on the side it tells about the mission it says it's a pleasant tea with a powerful mission and then it tells about the versatility of hemp which is truly mind-blowing <laughs> making a little word joke there and then uh, it also says how it was grown organically, it's improving the soil and um, how obviously you need to stage how it has no psychoactive effects. 
especially because people take it over the border. So it's, it's great if people can actually show this to any custom uh, people that, it, um, that it's legal to grow and has no psychoactive effect. And then one thing I'm very proud of is that we uh, got our um, organic certificate uh, in September last year. It has always been grown organic, but now we finally went through all the administration to get the certificates. And we also got the eco certificates, which is a Dutch one. Uh, and it's, uh, it stands for like extra sustainability activities, such as a biodegradable packaging and packaging at a social enterprise. And then, there's one joke when you open it, I had to put it somewhere. Um, in here, it says about the biodegradable packaging, and in here, it says about the social enterprise. So it's a bit hidden, but you get a bit of extra information once you open the pack. So that's it. Yeah, so I just um, showed you the pure hemp, but then we've also created three blends. Uh, for me, it's obviously it is about hemp, but I do realize that people have different tastes and people want something, uh, want to, to try different teas during the day. So we've created three blends. They're all at least 50% hemp. So I've seen quite a few hemp teas that have like 5% hemp, but for us, it's about hemp. So 50% is always my, uh, my minimum. Then this one is the most traditional one, I would say, is the hemp and herbs with like chamomile, mint, um, what's it? Come on, mint ginger. It's hard for me to put this in English straight away. Uh, pop marigold is the word, and linden flowers. Um, so very, very traditional, mild, soothing hemp tea. Um, this one is the hemp chai, which is a bit sweeter. It's obviously inspired by Indian chai, which is normally based on green tea, but then we put hemp in there instead of green tea. Uh, and it's with uh, lemongrass, cinnamon, ginger. It's a bit, it's a bit more, more spicy and warm. And then there's the hemp and turmeric, which is a new one actually, um, involving cur curcuma, turmeric. We created this one because we noticed that uh, many people that are looking for hemp, CBD, are also using turmeric because they both have anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so I decided to put them both in one package and I do realize that we really hit that target group spot on uh, now. And also it's, it's a nice, a bit, bit more of a spicy, we also put some ginger in there, um, a bit more lemongrass, so a bit more sp um, fresh spicy tea. And for me it's very important not to put any aromas in, so it's, it's all real tea, it's all real, real herbs, no, no aromas whatsoever, no sugar, just real stuff. This is pure one. Okay. Looking forward to your honest yeah. opinion. So which one is this? Uh, this is the pure one, the blue. Pure. Okay. So, simply M. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's nice. It's a, has a sweet little sweetness to it. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. A bit of a spice in the end. <laughs> 